So I get this question a lot and I wanted to talk about this with everyone. That question is, am I afraid to do this adventure RVing as a solo female by myself? I get it quite a bit actually from people that I meet on the road. I've had some friends and family who've asked me that question. So anyways, I just thought I'd address it because I'm sure there's other people out there who have come across this or are scared to get out there and actually do some RVing. So. I just wanted to encourage everybody to push through that fear. So let's talk a little bit about it. So I guess it's you know, kind of understandable that people would ask that to a woman because I think generally women are perceived as maybe not being able to handle themselves as well as men are out in a situation. And you know, to some degree that could be true, but there's ways to mitigate that through you know, self-protection. And that can be anything that you might want as an individual. Protection for everybody looks different. Some people choose to carry mace with them, a baseball bat, wasp spray is another one. People carry guns and everybody is different and how they want, how they choose to do that. Some people just don't do anything at all. So I won't go into what I actually do just for um, privacy purposes and I don't want to give away my, my secrets. So <laughs> not for protection anyways, but um, suffice to say, I, I do protect myself in ways that I feel I'm comfortable with. And so let's talk about some of the things that I was fearful from in the beginning. One, the protection on the road. What do I need to protect myself when I'm out on the road? The other thing I was fearful of was learning an entirely new lifestyle. I mean, I've never RV'd before. I've only been in them a couple of times, but I've never done this on my own. And I don't know the first thing about taking care of an RV. So this was very foreign to me. I've always lived in a, an apartment or a house. And so, you know, living in an RV full time, well, <laughs> that's a whole different you know, story. And so I needed to get that figured out, but I was scared of what I need to do. What do I not know? The RV I was purchasing is a 25 foot RV. So, you know, I was scared of, oh my God, am I going to be able to drive this thing? Now I've driven across Texas to Washington when I first moved to Washington state in a 25 foot Penske truck and towed my vehicle behind. So, you know, inside I was like, okay, if I can do that, I've got this with the RV, but I'm doing this full time. So thinking what, what can possibly come up? You know, there's situations that, you know, I'm traveling around on scenic drives and scenic roads and am I going to get stuck somewhere or, you know, am, am I going to go on a road that I shouldn't be on and not be able to turn around? So those are things that I was scared of. I was fearful of how am I going to take care of the RV? What, you know, mechanical things do I need to think of to be proactive about maintenance and making sure that the RV is running smoothly? One of my number one fears was dumping the black tank. And <laughs> I think a lot of people are nervous about that one for the first time. I was so nervous because I've seen all these horror stories about people dumping the tanks and sewer raw sewage dumping all over them it's pretty disgusting so i think after the first three or four times i had it down pretty well but yeah it was it was nerve-wracking the first time so i actually went to a state park where i was the only person there dumping and i wanted to take my time as much time as possible and i think it probably took me 25 to 30 minutes the first time to dump the tanks because i was so careful with everything and making sure everything was connected properly like yeah, now it's, I can do it in five minutes at, at least. So not a big deal. The other thing is just, what are all the unknowns of RVing? I had planned on not really staying at RV parks and I wanted to boondock as much as possible. So what does that look like? Where am I going to stay every night? Like that was daunting, trying to find a place every night to stay. So that I was, I was scared about that. And some of these things, by the way, are, are pressures that I put on myself. You know, a lot of times we're, we're nervous about things that are going on because we put so much pressure on ourselves to perform a certain way or to make sure things are happening a certain way. And so that led to a lot of pressure for me. The other thing was, what if I get stuck somewhere? Like, what if I get the RV stuck? And especially, you know, I'm by myself. I don't have anybody to help me get the RV unstuck. So what do I do in that situation? These are all questions that were going through my head. Another big one for me was because, again, I had wanted to boondock in the wild. It was staying by myself where nobody was around. What do I do then? How am I going to be scared? My, you know, what if somebody like comes out there and does something? You know, there's all these crazy things that go through your head, but 
nevertheless, they were fears. So let's take it back a little bit to when I first started thinking about RVing. I had been thinking about it for many years and then I was talking with my cousins and they really thought that they wanted to do it too and we even started looking at RVs and we we're talking about doing it together and that made me feel comfortable like you know they're gonna go out and do this too and they'll have their own RV I'll have mine and we can kind of travel together maybe we'll break off every once in a while on our own but that felt comfortable to me and then they decided that they didn't want to do it and that's of course their choice on how they want to live their life and that's perfectly fine but I, I just decided I, I can't do it without them I was too nervous I was fearful of doing it on my own so I didn't and I ended up buying a house that I kept for one year until I decided that I had to RV. So here's the thing, I was not going to let fear get a hold of me. I was not going to let it keep me from doing what I wanted to do and living my dream. I had been dreaming about RVing for many, many years and I really wanted to RV while I was young and not wait until the traditional retirement years in order to fulfill my dream. So there's a saying that I have come to practice in my life and that is your greatest success is on the other side of your fear. Your greatest success is on the other side of your fear. And I have really, really adopted that into my lifestyle. You can have many great successes, but you'll never know unless you push through that fear. So since I've really been thinking about how do I push through my fear so that I can attain my goals, I have never felt happier. I mean, there's definitely some challenges that come with that. Your greatest success is on the other side of fear. Think about that. What's on the other side of fear? The beauty that comes with your dreams. You know, going down a mountain descent and seeing beautiful countryside. It could be, you know, going for a job that you really wanted and applying for that job, knowing that maybe you only have 70 to 80% of what they're looking for, or maybe they're asking for you to have a degree and you don't have a degree. I can't tell you how many times I've applied for jobs like that and have gotten them, but you'll never know unless you try. So that's, I guess, the key thing that I'm trying to say here is you don't know until you try. You don't know what's going to happen. Okay, so what does pushing through fear look like? I've written down a couple of things for that. So I'm looking down at my notes, by the way. It can be taking small baby steps towards your dream goal, and that could be very scary, whatever those actionable steps are. So if you start taking those steps and you're feeling nervous and fearful and concerned about what's going to happen if you put yourself out there, just think about what your dream goal is and what's going to happen if you get the dream that you've been wanting. If you keep your eye on the prize, if you will, if you keep your eye on that and keep thinking constantly about what that looks like, visualize in your mind what that dream is and what that goal is and keep that always at the forefront when you wake up in the morning and when you go to sleep at night and then take your steps. The other thing is just being nervous and still moving forward. That's what pushing through fear looks like. Um, it happened to me when I bought the RV and decided that I was going to sell my house. I was so nervous and I had this huge pit in my stomach and oh my god, it was it was crazy. And so I I still did it though and look where I am now and I'm so glad that I did. You would think that maybe having this knot in your stomach might mean that you shouldn't go in this direction, but it doesn't always mean that. So we'll go into that in just a little bit. So here's what I did. I asked myself, how would I feel? if I didn't push through this fear and purchase the RV and go RVing on my own? It was a tough question, but one that I think I really needed to figure out because I, you know, I choose to not live my life with regrets, right? And so I didn't wanna get to be in my you know retirement years and regret not having done this and taking the opportunity. So I decided I had to do it on my own. I wasn't gonna wait for someone to show up and hold my hand. So instead, I decided to hold my hand myself and push through this. I put the house up for sale and I purchased an RV all in the same day. Maybe a little ambitious, you know, but I was serious. I had decided at this moment that this is what I was going to do. So I took actions and did it. Interestingly though, I felt the worst stomach pain that I had ever felt in my life 
after I purchased the RV and put the house up for sale for two days. I was stressed. I had so much stress on my body. I could feel it in every, every ounce of my body. And I was like, what is, is happening here? I purchased this RV. I knew I wanted to do it. I had decided I was going to do it. I knew it was the right move for me, but why was I so stressed? Why did I have this horrible, horrible stomach pain? And I finally figured it out is that and this is the thing too. I pride myself on really checking in with my body, trying to understand like, how is it feeling? What is my gut telling me? And I try to, you know, listen to those things, right? So I can make good choices for myself. And typically when I have a, you know, really hard decision to make and my stomach is hurting, I think maybe it's not the right thing to do. So in this particular situation, I was like, what is happening here? I know this is what's right. And part of it is I put pressure on myself. I put pressure on myself to do everything at once. And that was what was creating the stress. I was thinking of, you know, my God, I've got to sell the house. I have to pack everything up. I have to figure out what's going to go in the RV. I need to sell everything. I need to have a garage sale. I wanted to maximize every single dollar that I could from everything that I had to put in my savings as I traveled. And I was talking with one of my fellow RVers and they said, forget like trying to maximize every single dollar. It's not worth it. Sell every, sell the big things that you can have a garage sale and everything else, send it to Goodwill and donate it. And that's exactly what I did. I felt so much stress come off my body when I decided that. And I talked to my neighbors. I had some really great neighbors who helped me out and they just came through for me like you wouldn't believe. Came over and helped me pack the entire house up, sell things, do the garage sale with me take things to goodwill. Like it was just incredible how many people came out for me. So I am forever eternally grateful to my neighbors. So everything worked out. I pushed through the fear and then I rolled out of my garage and my driveway with everything packed in the RV. And I couldn't believe this was happening to me. Like, oh my God, I'm going to get teary eyed thinking about it. It was the most beautiful moment in the world. It was like, oh, I'm done. The house is sold. All the stuff is sold. I'm in my RV. I'm moving in my dreams, literally on wheels in my RV. So it was incredible. So I would never have had that feeling had I just said, you know what? I'm just going to wait for another opportunity when someone can come with me. Instead, I decided to do it on my own and push through it. So all this sounds like really great, right? Pushing through your fear, taking actions, you know, it, but RVing or anything that you do in your life is not always going to be happiness and positivity, right? There's going to be challenges that come up. And I guess the way that I look at that is that challenges to me are opportunities for growth. Um, I might have a little bit of a meltdown as the opportunity for growth is happening, <laughs> but I recognize it now pretty quickly that it's happening. And I, I choose to use meditation as a form of stress relief. And so I will sit and meditate, even if it's for like five minutes, it's so quick and easy. But I just had a moment like a month ago where I couldn't find a place to park overnight. It was getting really dark and I'd been driving quite a few hours and I, you know, I was stressed. And so I meditated and and it was fine and life goes on. It was such a minor thing in comparison, I suppose, to everything else that happens. But anyways, needless to say, there are challenging times that happen uh, even after you start RVing or even after you push through those fears, right? And, and accomplish uh, some of your dreams. So I guess the number one thing that I hope you take from this is that deciding to overcome your fears and take action is the hardest thing deciding deciding is the hardest thing to do in order to accomplish your goals but once you decide you can then take a look at what is the goal that I want and then what are some actionable steps in between once you know what those actionable steps are it's easy after that you just start taking action and yes it can be challenging sometimes and yes it can be painful but you know, it, 
nothing in life is is easy and sometimes I think the things that really make us happy are challenging to obtain and sometimes painful during the process but it's worth it all right at least for me it is there are many times that people have told me how courageous I am for doing this and it just seems like I do this flawlessly without any fear and the truth is there's fear there is fear sometimes but I don't know like I feel like mainstream media has put it out there that our world is extremely scary and that people are scary and that you know it, it kind of keeps us in that box a little bit if you will and I have really found out that people are actually genuinely nice and very helpful perfect strangers I got my RV stuck in Ohio and I couldn't get out it was the back end of the RV was stuck um, I'll put a link to the video up here or maybe over here I think over here or here I don't anyways <laughs> I'll put a link up there um so I got my RV stuck in Ohio in this very loose gravel sand and three perfect strangers came to my aid and helped me and pulled me out with a backhoe and you know it was just it was amazing so I have really discovered that there's nothing to necessarily be fearful of on the road. There's challenges that happen, but other than that, I love what I'm doing. And I just hope that anybody out there who is looking to live this kind of a lifestyle, to travel, to, I mean, just do anything. It doesn't matter whether you're male or female, just to go out there and take some actions towards your goals and push through that fear. So I'll say it again, your greatest success is on the other side of fear. I just love that. It really, really speaks to me. All right, my friends. Well, I am here in Arizona and I'm actually in a Home Depot parking lot. <laughs> Let's see if I can show you here. <laughs> Home Depot. Yeah. I got up very early this morning to head out over here to Phoenix to get some errands done get some breakfast and oh they're starting yard work out there so I better wrap this video up <laughs> anyways I've decided to do more videos on RVing and what I kind of do on a daily basis and how I just live this lifestyle so if you have any questions for me um, or comments about you know what kind of materials you want to see as I continue doing these videos let me know and I will certainly answer your questions I have a lot of questions that have already come in that I'm going to start answering over the next uh, couple of months and then in between again I'll put the uh, quest videos and the um, adventures that I had going from Seattle to the east coast of Canada so anyways all right guys well hope you have a really great holiday season and I will see you later bye and as always if you like my videos go ahead and subscribe to my youtube channel comment below and like and share my videos thank you